Fitness Monday. Hello, citizens, and welcome back to RJ's World. You know what time it is. It is Maintenance Monday. I am so glad you are here. Why don't you take a minute right now, get your heart and mind prepared for the Word of God. If you are sitting and watching, grab a pen and paper. Let's take some notes. I'm excited about today. You know why I'm excited? Because today is viewer's choice. That means that somebody wrote in, right, and had a question, so I'm excited to answer that question today. Take a moment, especially if you're not going to watch. Like it right now. Like it right now. Like it right now. But if you're going to watch, like it at the end. Share the Word of God by simply pushing a button, and remember to comment and fellowship in the comment sections with all of us together. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Let's get to what the viewer wanted to ask. The viewer says, what about the temptations you don't realize are temptations until you're already in them? Great question, right? What about, temptation, what about the temptations you don't realize are temptations until you're already in them? And this question came as a result of um, You're a Contender, which was my very first video. Whoop, whoop. So somebody watched that video, my very first video, and this is the question. So I don't know if you're familiar with that, but you can go back and read um watch that video if you want but the first thing i want to do is give you my definition you guys know how this works it's my personal definition and i call it kingdom inspired what is the definition of temptation as i see it and it is a situation or circumstance trying to lure or pull out a nature that is not the true god divine nature so now I want you to think of temptation. And I want you to know that temptation is a situation or circumstance trying to lure or pull out a nature that is not the true God or divine nature. Okay, for example, when we are placed in positions that force us to make decisions or choices that demonstrate what's inside of us, right? When you're placed in a position that forces you to make a decision, that's going to demonstrate what is on the inside of us. What's on the inside of us? It's going to illustrate our character, right? So we understand that it's not just the stuff that everybody sees. It's the stuff that nobody sees. It's the stuff that nobody hears about. It's the stuff that nobody talks about. It's the stuff that if, you know, we had it our way, nobody would know about. Well, temptation is always pulling out whatever your true nature is. So if it's God, then we're good. If not, then perhaps not. So I was going to share this particular story with you anyway on this Maintenance Monday, but when I saw the uh, viewer's choice, it fit perfectly. So they're going to perfectly flow together. So this is going to work. So I like to call this da, 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 the face-off right this is the face off and i want you to recognize that it really is a face off because when we think about temptation remember it lures or pulls out a nature because of some situation because of some circumstance temptation exposes or affirms temptation exposes or affirms remember that temptation is not just something that's going to be dressed up and look a certain part temptation exposes or affirms. I don't want you to look at temptation only as a seductress or like something bad trying to tempt you to respond inappropriately. I want you to consider that every single day and every moment we are absolutely tempted. Meaning we are placed in situations where we have to make a choice that is completely dependent on our true nature despite what everyone else sees, thinks, or has experienced with you. Every single day you are tempted. Every single day I am tempted. Remember, temptation doesn't mean you are weak. Temptate, being tempted doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean you're lustful. It means there is a situation before you and you must make a decision. That's all it means. There's a situation before you and you've got to make a decision. Let's go to James 1. This is the foundational scripture that we were in on You're a Contender. We're not going to spend too much time here, but I want to give you a brief reminder. And it reads, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Well, the first thing is, is fall into diverse temptations, not fall for. That's important for us to recognize. Fall into diverse. You can fall into something without falling for it, which means you can be involved in something without yielding to something, right? Without letting it overtake you. So when you fall into diverse, diverse temptations, 
knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. This is very important as well. Um, patience, but let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So when patience is perfecting her work in us, when we are perfected through patience, we are enabled to be whole. We are completely entire, okay? Entire, I'm sorry. So remember, patience perfecting, working in us. Perfect. Remember, patience perfecting work in us enables perfection and wholeness from us. This will come in handy in a moment. So don't look at fall into, again, as fall four, right? Go back to your contender um, when you get a chance, if you want to go deeper into that. Their question was, what if you don't realize something is a temptation until you're already in it? So remember, you can fall into something. Doesn't mean you have to fall for it. Remember, let patience have her perfect work that you may be entire. Remember, patience. That's very important for us to remember. So what if you realize something is a temptation after you're in it? That is no big deal because that's where we already are. Fall into, you're into it. What do you do? You count it all joy. What does that mean? You've been counted worthy. You're a contender now. It's a good thing to be a contender in the faith. You want to be a contender. You want to be counted worthy. But I do understand what you're saying. So I want to assist you in um, these temptations, which means every situation will either affirm or expose us. So look at every situation as a choice. And I want you to remember, you guys remember Matrix? Remember every situation is a choice. We are walking in the newness of life. And every day you have the opportunity to walk in the newness of life or not. Every day you are faced with a choice. Red pill, blue pill. Every single day. Which pill will you take? If you take the red pill, then you will be affirmed affirmed right so we've got affirmed and what does affirm mean it means you're born of god it means that you're walking in the newness of life that if you take the red pill you're making the choice that says i am walking in the newness of life okay then we've got the blue pill or you can be exposed i cannot stress this enough i really want us to get every single day we are faced with a choice and based on your choice is going to determine whether it is affirmed that you are walking in the newness of life or you're going to be exposed that you are not walking in the newness of life okay so every single day we are given an option every single day whether or not we are authentic is going to be tried don't think temptations are going to be an hourglass shape covered in lace or a charming tall and muscular um man or woman don't think temptations come looking like the billboards and signs used when you're being trained on what to look for they don't always come threatening next slide right they don't always come threatening this is our basic training so what happens normally when we're studying and we're preparing for um, what to expect when we get walk into this life? Things, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for everything to be so obvious. We're looking for, what is this, drugs, right? We're looking for it to be obvious. This is someone who's drunk. We're looking for obvious things. Look at these beautiful physiques. This is what we're looking for when we think of temptations. That is basic training. It is not going to look the way you trained for it. It is not going to look the way you train for it. Temptations are just situations that force us to make decisions that reveal our true nature in thought, word, or deed. So let me show you this. Temptations can arise in destitution, frustration, or discontentment. I'm going to say that again. Temptations can arise in destitution, frustration, discontentment, which caused us to oppose God. So there's a story in the Bible about a king. And this particular king heard about the Israelites. He came and he attacked the Israelites and then brought some of those same Israelites and he put them in prison, right? So he kept them as prisoners. So this is what the Israelites did. They made a vow to God that if he delivered the people into their hands, they would destroy everything. They would get no glory nor increase from them. God answers them, 
gives them victory. They keep their word. Then they journey. Numbers 21. So now they're on a journey. So this king comes. He attempts to take over. He does get some of them. He keeps some of them as prisoners. They pray to God and they say, Lord, if you would just deliver them, we will not keep anything for ourselves. Right. Even the spoil, even the gain we could get from them, we will take nothing. Here is what happens. Numbers 21, they go on this journey and it says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Pay attention to that. The soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Now God just delivered, just like they asked, they made a vow. Right. And they said that if you deliver, we won't take anything. God gave them victory. The very next thing they do is go on this journey. Now they're speaking against God and against Moses. Wherefore, this is what they say. Wherefore, have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Look at this. For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loatheth this light bread. What did we see in James? Let patience have her perfect work. What do we see here? They are tired of manna. They are tired. They said, our souls, we are angry. We are tired of what, we're, what we've been getting. We're tired of this. I just told you frustration, discontentment, exhaustion. All of these things work to oppose God in our lives. What am I showing you? I'm showing you the same way that they were just victorious. Nothing was going on other than they become discouraged and they got tired of eating what they've been eating. So now they start doing things their way. What do they do? Speak against God. Speak against Moses, right? Question God's provision. Question God's protection. What have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Look at this temptation here. They were placed with a choice. They could have kept eating that bread that was miraculously provided for them. Or they could be discontent, complaining about the state or the condition that they're in. What am I saying? I'm saying you're just placed with a choice every single day. You can make a choice to trust God, to believe God, to, to, to know, to rely on him, to not lean to your own understanding, to acknowledge him in every way. Or you can choose to be discouraged. You can choose to hate the provision that God has given you. And I want you to know that so often God has given us people. God has given us resources that we begin to loathe, but it came from God. We get discouraged and we act like what God has provided, which once we appreciated so much, now we loathe it. Now we hate the thing God gave us. And no bad situation occurred. I want you to see that temptation doesn't have to come shaped like a, 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 a woman who's trying to seduce you. It can be something as simple as, I'm tired of eating what I've been eating and what will that bring out of you? Right? I'm tired of dealing what I've been dealing with and what will that pull out of you? Okay, so temptation reveals what's truly inside of us. So I want you to know, um, well, let me show you. Keep going. Watch this. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. While they were complaining, God released serpents. I'm trying to help us understand we got to make the right decisions because we we bank on God's mercy, not realizing there's a beautiful song that says, what if his mercy did come through raindrops? What if the rain in your life is the mercy of God, right? So God released serpents and they got bit and some of them died. And so they went running back to the same person that they just were speaking against, right? Temptation, be patient. Let God finish the work on the inside of you. Let him do what he's doing. On the inside of you, don't be discouraged. And even when you are discouraged, go to your prayer closet for encouragement. Don't begin to hate the thing that God has provided to you, right? And we do that with people. We do that with relationships, don't we? Right? So they're tired. Um, their, their ungrateful dissatisfaction revealed their entire entitlement. And God's response with snakes revealed that they were aware. That's one thing I want you to understand. You said that what if you don't know you're in the temptation until you're already in it? If you have the Holy Spirit, you've been warned. You were already warned. You ignored it. You overrode it. 
You, you tried to convince yourself that's not what it is. You tried to dress the part, look the part, and do all the right things so it wouldn't look like you were being convicted. But the truth of the matter is, he got on the inside of our flesh, and there's no way that God's on the inside of you and is not warning you of danger up ahead. It's not warning you that the, the choice you're making, you're about to compromise. God warns us even before a thing gets inappropriate. He warns us, and you already know. You already know. So I want you to understand that, right? When the snakes came out, God didn't have to tell them why the snakes came out. They they knew. Oh, we did the wrong thing and they went and apologized. That's how you know that the truth is you already know, right? Temptations can also manifest when there isn't any lack at all and maybe only one. And it's wrapped in good intentions, but boxed in selfish ambition. Look at this. Saul was made king of Israel. God gave him an assignment. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 15. And it reads, Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. So here, Samuel gives Saul an assignment. He's been chosen by God. He's been made king. He's been anointed. And he's been given an assignment. Go utterly destroy everything. Look at this, y'all. Spare them not. Put that in the comments. Spare them not. That's important. So it says spare them not. Destroy everything. So Saul and the people go. So now we see Saul and the people go. Let's go to verse 7. Now we, I'm sorry, 9. We just saw, right? Saul and the people. He just said, spare them not. But Saul and the people spared. Now the instruction was very clear. Spare them not. But Paul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, which is said utterly destroyed, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good. How are you determining something's good that God didn't say was good and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refused, that they destroyed utterly? What am I saying to you? I'm saying there was nothing wrong with this. Saul was made king. He was anointed. There were no issues. Where did the temptation come in? When Saul saw something that was good to him. And it opposed God. Then Saul was faced with a choice. Choose God or choose himself. Choose his own selfish ambition. Don't look at temptation. We're always going to mess up when we look at temptation that it's got to come wrapped in pr provocative or vulgarity. No. It can be something that's simple. You are made king. You are anointed. You've got power and you've got an assignment. There's no temptation there right up until you have an, uh, an idea outside of God's idea. You think something's good that God is saying is not good. Good. Saul was so puffed up. Come on, keep going. Saul was so puffed up. Look at this in 12. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul, because Samuel's grieved, because God told Samuel he was, that God was grieved, so God told Samuel, in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place. So Saul goes and builds himself up something like a monument unto himself. He's so proud of himself and what he has done in his disobedience. He builds up a monument for himself. What does that look like? The temptation that when we start per, uh, pursuing things outside of the will of God, pursuing things that are not sin or not necessarily wrong, but they are wrong when God has told you not to do them. For you, it is sin. So Saul is lifting himself up. Saints, sometimes we have to examine ourselves and ask yourself, Yourself, where am I? Where am I in this? Am I ducking? Am I hiding? Am I dodging? I know when I first gave my life um, to the Lord, I had a struggle, which it really wasn't. But I, I had embraced a doctrine and I thought it was a struggle. I had this struggle for so long. And one day I was tired of it. I was tired. And I said, what do I do to be free? Now, being in sweet fellowship will make you free. But I hadn't yet come to that place. But I knew I wanted to be free. And I would just, I would just call my mom, find out what she's doing. I would just go sit up under, cause I knew that if I got free time, hmm, I was going, I was going to end up in a place I had no business being. 
right? I knew that I wasn't ready to be alone. I just told, I just started telling her everything. I knew I needed to be held accountable. I knew that so that she could check me when I started ducking, when I started hiding, when I started concealing, because it was either face the music, because God apparently wasn't enough to make me do right. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes we have to tell the truth about where we are. And sometimes we'll do things and we're more afraid of people catching us than the God that sees everything we're doing. And so I said, Lord, I mean you all the way. So I would just sit up under her bored, sit up under her upset, frustrated, but I met God. And since then, now I don't need a babysitter, but I did, huh? And some of y'all need babysitters too, but you too proud to admit it. But that's, that's neither here nor there. We're going to keep it going, right? So God's command and instructions became second to Saul's wants, success, and fulfillment. So it doesn't matter whether you know. Once you fall into the temptation, because you are contender, just remember it's a face-off. It's a face-off. And when is a face-off? Every single time you have to make a decision. It's always a face-off because the enemy doesn't send images for us to study and train for. He sends the things that seem harmless, like it's nothing. And we oftentimes feel invincible or beyond something, or we even feel right, even if we fall for it. Falling into it is not the same as falling for it. It doesn't matter if you know it's a, a temptation or not. Always assume it's always a temptation. Always prepare yourself to take the red pill or the blue pill. It's always there. So my challenge to you today is to be present in this walk with God so that the fall doesn't take us on a trip into darkness. You can fall into temptation. You don't have to fall for it. But if you fall for it, you're going to fall for a trip. And you just won a trip into darkness, right? And it's hard to get out. Once you've gotten out and go back in, it's hard to get out, okay? Be present. And if you know God is speaking, don't ignore him. Obey him. It doesn't matter what others think or feel about it. And he will reward you. He will reward you. So that's my encouragement to you today. Be present. Be present. God lives on the inside of you. You always know it's a temptation. So get in sweet fellowship with him so you can recognize it. Have a brave day. It's a face off. Next week on Maintenance Monday. On Maintenance Monday. The gospel and the word of the Lord. But we will it's forsake all others Monday. for the advancement it's of our careers. Your heart's truest condition cannot be detected it's by your actions. Monday. What is going head to head today? In this corner. <laughs>